Hi there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Peternell. I'm the owner of Family Nutrition Services in Denver, Colorado, and I'm the creator of a 30-day online program for people who have Hashimoto's. It's called Nourished and Renewed with Hashimoto's, and you can find more about that program in the pinned comments below. Today is a video for everyone, not just people with Hashimoto's, and I'm addressing the question of what is methylation? What does it do in the body? And what does it mean for you and your health? Maybe you've heard of the term methylation. You know, some people kind of interchange the word methylation with detoxification, but in fact, methylation is responsible for many processes in the body, not just detoxification, but definitely including detoxification. And as you know, I talk a lot about detox here on this YouTube channel, and I've written about it also in some blog posts on my website at sarahpeternell.com. So as far as detoxification goes, yes, methylation is really important, but I want to explain a little bit more about some of the ins and outs or the biochemistry, if you will. So biochemistry or science isn't your thing, go ahead and skip forward about a minute and a half, but I do want to tell you what actually takes place in the process of methylation. It's pretty simple. It's the transfer of atoms from one place to another. What? Transferring atoms from one place to another in the body. Basically what we take are one carbon atom and three hydrogen atoms, which for purposes of this video we'll call CH3, and we move them from one substance to another where it's needed. So optimal methylation means that this process is taking place easily. The transfer of CH3, these atoms, from one place in the body where they're needed, where they're not needed to another place where they are needed, happens seamlessly. Optimal methylation has a positive impact on other reactions in the body that may regulate activity not just of detox, but also of the cardiovascular system, the neurological system, reproductive system, and many more. In fact, if you think about it, methylation is at the core of healthy DNA production and cellular health. So methylation is really important for life and for optimal health at its core. So methylation is important to every single person. I do a lot of videos about having Hashimoto's. I did another video a little while ago about whether or not you have a defect in a gene that may impair your body's ability to methylate optimally, and that is called the MTHFR gene. And you can watch that video to learn more about the test and how it might relate to something like Hashimoto's. Today, I can tell you that um, basically, if there are any breakdowns in the methylation process, simply put, meaning that if you don't have um, an enzyme that is needed to turn on a critical methyl donor known as SAMe, well, then perhaps your methylation systems are not working as well. So, um, MTHF is the enzyme that helps for SAMe to be active, in, in a nutshell. If you have the MTHFR genetic variation, maybe one copy or two copies of this variant, then your production of that enzyme is decreased, and approximately 60% of people in the United States actually have this genetic mutation. So it's not uncommon at all that people may suffer with low methylation functions in their body. People who have this genetic mutation are challenged because their bodies can't create enough of the 5-MTHF that is needed for effectively turning the gears in the methylation cycle. I like to think of these gears moving basically in the direction towards health. And if that enzyme is diminished because of the genetic variation, the gears either don't turn at all or they turn too slowly, or even in some cases, it may feel like the gears are turning backwards. 
well, that's not great if you are in this for optimizing things like your cellular health, your DNA production, um, you know, just basically giving your body the best opportunities to be healthy in every way. Most of us want that. When methylation is turned off or not working properly and it's not creating enough of the SAMe, well, molecules can be impaired, okay? And molecules that maybe can't even be efficiently or sufficiently produced in the body might include things like glutathione, a master antioxidant, CoQ10, melatonin, which is a neurotransmitter hormone that supports healthy circadian rhythms in sleep, or serotonin, the feel-good hormone. Also, norepinephrine and epinephrine, which are both adrenal hormones. L-carnitine, cysteine, and taurine are all also impacted by the body's ability to create enough 5-MTHF. So as I mentioned in my other video about this, you can take a simple, pretty inexpensive genetic test to find out if you have a problem with your methylation cycle or if you have the MTHFR genetic variation. Um, let's just assume you're watching this and you're one of the 60% in the U.S., like me, who have this variation. So what are some things that we can do to improve our methylation cycle? Assuming that ours needs a little bit of support because it's so common and because we want to have optimal health. What are some things that we can do? Well, certainly eating the right kinds of foods helps to support your methylation cycle. There are particular foods that will really contribute to the positive flow of those gears in the right direction, and those foods would include asparagus and green leafy vegetables, avocado and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and other um, foods that can contribute to sort of the de detox detoxification process, you can watch my video all about those foods and see if you want to learn more about those. Um, also things like legumes, including peas and beans and lentils, and also rice supports the methylation cycle. Now, if you have intolerances to these foods, of course, you want to stay away from them, but most people can tolerate these pretty well, and they tend to be low allergenic or low in uh, sensitivity foods. So eating those types of foods, primarily plant-based, healthy, whole foods, non-processed, um, is one of the first things that we can do to support the methylation cycle. The second thing is really about the life, lifestyle and the measures that we take to support our health as far as physical exercise and activity, avoiding excess alcohol consumption. Maybe watch my video about whether or not you should be drinking alcohol, for example, if you have an autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's. What about people who smoke cigarettes or are exposed to a lot of toxicity in their environment? Those people do also have possibly some difficulty with methylation. Also people who consume a lot of coffee. Those people may have some issues with methylation as well. And last but not least, people who are always stressed out, they are also impairing their methylation cycle. Stress interferes with the processes in our body in a number of different ways. So there are also some nutrients that we can take, particular supplements that I recommend to my clients on a regular basis. And you can read about on the internet, you can read about on my website, or you can just do some basic research about good methylation vitamins that may help to support your total health. And if you have a particular concern in mind, whether it's cardiovascular, hormone balance, neurotransmitter production, detox, etc., then you can also research the specific nutrients that maybe help in one of those particular areas of health. But I'm going to share with you really my top list of supplements that will help to support um, optimal methylation and I'll even include some links below to where you can purchase these supplements for yourself. So the first one is vitamin D. Vitamin D is essential for really helping to support a healthy immune system. And even though we call it a vitamin, it's actually called 
pro-hormone vitamin D. So having these cofactors and the precursors to healthy hormone production is one of the very first things that's needed to assist in overall um, balance in the body for hormones and for total health, especially as it pertains to methylation. The second one is active folate. So you maybe have heard of this as methyl folate or 5-MTHF folate. So it's different than folic acid. Folic acid is synthetic. It is not the same thing as the bioavailable, highly usable in the body, methyl folate. And methyl folate has a lot of benefits for those people who have the MTHFR variation because their body can put it right into the methylation cycle. So also along the lines of B vitamins, methylcobalamin, which is the active or methylated form of vitamin B12, and P5P or peroxidal 5-phosphate, which is the active vitamin B6, and also riboflavin 5-phosphate, the active form of vitamin B2. All of these basically closer to the methylated version that can be used in the body are the most important B vitamins that you can use if you're trying to support healthy methylation. Not all substances in terms of these types of formulas are created equal. It's very important, especially with something like a B complex, to look at how those nutrients are balanced together what is the source that they're getting the methylated B vitamins from, and how do they interact at what dosage in the body for health. It is true that taking too much of methylated vitamins may actually exacerbate a condition by spinning the gears of the methylation cycle too fast. And you don't want that to happen either because that can result in like too fast of a processing speed. If you think about you know, like your washing machine going really, really fast and it just blows up. Nobody wants that. There'd be soap all over the place and your clothes wouldn't be clean. It's kind of the same thing with too much or over methylation. For people who take too much of the wrong kind of supplement, they may feel anxious or they may have trouble sleeping. They may feel sweaty or they might just know that something is off in their body. It's really important for you to consult with someone who is board certified in holistic nutrition if you are planning to create a customized supplement regimen for yourself in order to assist with optimal methylation. So I can help you with that. And there are many people across the United States in the field of holistic nutrition who can do that with you as well. So let's keep talking about some of the nutrients. Um, magnesium is one that is really, really important as a cofactor similar to vitamin D to supporting the methylation process. Not only that, but it has numerous effects in supporting the neuro and muscular uh, skeletal systems of the body. So kind of the whole outward structure of our bodies, everything from muscles and nerves and bones to kind of just all of the tissue that holds our bodies together. It creates a lot of integrity and it's also responsible for so many different enzymatic processes in the body. You can watch my other uh, video that I have about magnesium if you want to learn more. And finally, betaine, which is also known as trimethylglycine, is a very helpful supplement that you can take. It helps to support the methylation process and it may have other benefits in the body as well. I personally have found that adding betaine, trimethylglycine, to my own regimen has helped me to do more um, of a more optimal digestion, supporting things like hypochlorhydria or low stomach acid, helping to relieve upper gastrointestinal symptoms, and also just kind of supporting the integrity of the gut. So there are lots of benefits to taking these nutrients, not just to support methylation, but for other functions in the body as well. It's pretty amazing how proper methylation can influence the health of our body and it is genuinely overlooked in kind of mainstream health and mainstream medicine for sure. If you are a research nerd or a 
functional health nerd, a functional nutrition nerd like me, and you're already following some of the top minds, Amy Yasko, um, definitely um, Ben Lynch, one of my absolute favorite, um, Dr. Deanna Minich has done some research on uh, the nutrient support for methylation. These are the heroes of nutrigenomics, which are teaching us about the ways in which our genes and our environment and our diet all interact to create an ideal health environment. I encourage you to check out um, those people on social media or if they have channels on YouTube or definitely get some of their books. The book Dirty Genes by uh, Ben Lynch is one of my absolute favorites. Um, I think the more that we know about our genetic makeup and what we can do to optimize our health is one of the best ways of living for prevention and to kind of think about the ways in which food and lifestyle and supplements and even our positive mindset can be prophylactic in a way to prevent the on you know onslaught of symptoms of aging um, and other symptoms that arise with certain conditions related to the methylation cycle and its either function or dysfunction. So thank you very much for watching my video today. I hope you'll come back and learn more with me. Thanks for being here. Check out all the pinned comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you soon.